<laughs> okay, so let's let's look a little bit more closely at how we invoke methods on objects. Um, now that we have a little bit more background here in terms of the relationship between variables and the objects they they reference. Um, so I'm going to write four example methods here. So as a reminder, we're in the middle of this um, method we're writing called draw line. So let's actually get to the point where our turtle is going to draw a line. So we're going to say crush.pen down. Then we'll say crush.forward 25 steps. And then we're going to change the color of the pen. Crush.set pen color. Let's change it to red. And then we'll go forward for 25 more steps. So several methods here for us to, to take a look at. Let's look into these in a little bit more detail. So I'm going to do slash star enter so we can do another comment block. I, I realize that you all have called methods on our turtle objects. We did that on like the second day of school. We've done it since then. But I want to look more carefully at some of the syntax clues and some of the syntax for how exactly we, we do this. So the first thing I want to point out is that when invoking methods, we use the dot operator. The dot operator is literally that period that is before our method names. I don't mean to imply that the dot operator is always before a method, or rather that a method is always after a dot operator, but it is true that a dot is always before the method. Um, so we have dot pen down, dot forward, dot set pen color, dot forward again. So we use the dot operator to invoke a method on an object. Now to reinforce what we were just doing with the post-it notes in the sheet of paper, we wouldn't say we're, call, we're invoking the pen down method on the crush object because crush isn't an object, right? Crush is a variable. Its value is a reference to an object. So a, a more precise way of speaking would be saying we're invoking the pen down method on the turtle object referenced by the by crush or referenced by the crush variable. Okay. It's a little bit more long-winded. At times we get lazy and we just kind of blur that distinction, but I'm going to try to be extra careful here at the start of the semester. If we look at this method pen down, um, we'll notice that there are parentheses after it. And that's, that's all we need because if we tell the turtle to put the pen down, that's that's all the information. It puts the pen down onto the paper. It's ready to draw. So some methods take no arguments, but we still have parentheses um, after the method name. So pen down is a good example of that. So another syntax clue. There are always parentheses after a method. Parentheses after pen down, forward, set pen color, always parentheses. Alternatively, in contrast to pen down, some methods take one or more arguments. For example, forward. If we tell our turtle to go forward, it's going to be how far, how many steps. So we have to specify the number of steps we want the turtle to take. Similarly, when we call the set pen color method, we can't just leave it at that. The turtle needs to know, OK, but what color? Right? So we have to pass in the new color, in this case color, uh, this case red. We classify methods into two categories based on how they affect the objects on which we call them. So these four are all examples of what we call mutator methods. So when you see mutator, think of mutate to change something. 
mutator methods modify the state. And what I mean by state um, is the value, the values of properties of the object. So mutator methods change the value of one or more properties of an object. In computer science, we call that it modifies the state. Think of the state as the collection of all the values of all the properties of the object. Pen down, forward, set pen color are all mutator methods. They all change the state of our turtle object. Or perhaps more precisely, there's the potential that they change the state of the turtle object. Okay. So when we call pen down, if the pen is up, the pen is now down, and we've definitely changed the state of the turtle object. But if the pen was already down, it's still down, and the state didn't change, but there's still the potential that the state could have changed. So there's still mutator methods. When we call forward, our turtle is now in a different position in the world. We've changed the state of that turtle. When we call set pen color, it now has a different pen color. We've changed the state um, of that turtle. Some mutator methods, spe specifically those that are focused on a single property, um, often start with set. That's kind of a convention, so like set pen color. But not all mutator methods, right? Forward makes sense, pen down makes sense. They don't start with set. The other classification, um, or the other category of methods, uh, is shown by this example here. So let's write a line of code that creates a local variable um, of type int called pen width, and we're going to assign to it the value returned by invoking the get pen width method on the object referenced by crush, the turtle referenced by crush. And we'll do slash star above that to document what that is as well. So this is what we call an accessor method. When you think of accessor, think of access to get something. So an accessor method returns the value of a property of the object. And just to be clear, the state of the object does not change. So get pen width is an accessor method. It returns the value of the width of the pen for that turtle object. It does not change the state of the turtle object. The turtle is exactly the same as it was before we called to get pen width. We just now know the width of its pen. That's it. That's all that's changed. In general, and much more consistently than mutator methods, in general, accessor methods start with get by convention. So get pen width will get the value of the pen width property. In fact, some IDEs, um, not BlueJ, will like automatically write these accessor methods for you based on the properties of your class, um, which is super convenient. So we're going to write them by hand for, for practice, though. 